Did you brush your teeth this morning with Quip? I, I didn't. I, I, you know, I didn't want to, you know, end up uh, handling something that looks gross on camera. So I think I can wait. Is this toothbrush approved by the American Dental Association? What were your first impressions popping that thing open? I think it's a pretty cool product. I think they did yeah, a lot. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, we've got um, the packaging right here. Uh, it's uh, it's a it's pretty um, it's a pretty overall good experience and, and well done packaging. I, I think it's uh, you know it's just not something we, we necessarily say lightly, but. Uh, I think they've done a really good job and, and, and I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, so what were your what were your impressions as you were opening the product? Because I thought, you know, from the retail experience to the product itself, to the unboxing, I mean, I thought it was about as good as it can get. So I'm, I'm interested to hear what you think going through it. I would agree, it was a pretty good experience. Um, you know, I, it's tough to say that when you look at this box, it's not necessarily like the most uh, amazing or high-end or premium packaging you've seen, of course, but maybe it's just because we're jaded going into this. This is a toothbrush we have to remember. Right. And for their category, I think they've really knocked it out of the ballpark. I actually went to, a, I was at a Target again yesterday and I, I walked by to see which colors they had. And uh -huh. it was the only one on the shelf that they had in the, you know, the security cases? Like with the, yeah. yeah tagged it yeah those were all locked up and uh <laughs> the other one the the sonic airs and everything were just right on the shelf i thought that was kind of interesting so it's definitely like it's positioned even in the store as a high-end item oh it's it's a hot item literally huh people are, are thieving it out of stores yeah shoplifting <laughs> toothbrushes it's pretty good <laughs> yeah no overall really good experience just from the you know the beginning opening experience the first First thing you see is just like really, really, you know, well designed, good graphics and, and you know, very unique shaping. And then as you go through it, as we will hear, um, you know, it's very thought through at least, so. Yeah, I'm excited to break this one down with you. So let's go through the pricing. Do you think, should we pop that open and build a Yeah, yeah, here? let's take a look. You know, first thing you see, of course, is, is just these outer graphics. This is all just a, a, a sleeve here. There is a, a tear strip that you pull all the way down, which just allows the sleeve to open. This sleeve is, is literally just a, a, a piece of coated paper um, with four, four color printing on it. You, maybe they have this spot color here, so five color printing. You know, there, there's not really a lot to say about this sleeve. It's a nice uh, kind of soft touch texture, but uh, pr pretty straightforward and simple. Um, something like this by itself might cost like 10 cents to, to produce this sleeve itself. Once you get inside, you see this little pocket here. And inside the pocket are, are just basically instructions. That you yeah. pull out. Um, kind of a nice nice way to handle the instruction cards, which are often kind of just thrown in a, a little ski wampus or, um, you know, even underneath some products. They, you know, they just have designed a pretty simple but effective uh, little pocket right on the front, which is nice. Is there much more cost to do it that way or is that just creativity design layout? There's not a, a terrible lot of extra cost in there other than, you know, somebody has to glue this in place, which is just a little bit of manual labor but I, I i think that would kind of be um associated with any handwork you have to do to drop in items into your packaging anyway so i i don't think there's going to be a lot there got it really it is just thinking through the design in terms of like not only coming up with a pocket but even designing as you get to this next piece which is the uh molded pulp you know making sure that there's room for that in the mold itself um, gotcha. But yeah, so just quickly on these insert cards, you know, these are just again simple, um, simple coated paper with uh, you know full printing on them. We, you know, something like like probably both these and the actual pocket itself might be you know ten to fifteen cents for for all of them really. I feel like those instruction cards add a lot of a lot of value for good cost. Yeah, and, and they're easy to change out as you think of like the different models and stuff. Um, you know, really easy to change out, and the, but they feel like like they are very intentional and, and for, for that product as well, um, just yeah. because of where they're positioned. So as we get in here, you know, sleeve, we've got the instruction cards and pocket. 
the the next piece is um, this uh, this case here, which is uh, molded pulp. Uh, molded pulp, for for those who don't know, is very similar to how you make paper. It's it's literally pulp that it's ground up and then pressed into a form. Um, you of course are molding the form to your liking. So these guys came up with this pretty cool design, which is this uh, kind of elongated circle shape, and then um, which plays really well with the nature of molded pulp, which doesn't have really hard edges like an injected plastic or something. Uh, and it works really well for this brown brand, which even in you can see in their logo and stuff has these kind of nice soft curves and stuff like that. And I think that works really well for this. It feels techy kind of, right? Yeah, it's like somewhere that. between techy, yeah. but if you feel it, it's really soft. Somewhere yeah. between techy and natural. And, and so it's a really good material to use if you want to kind of get across sustainability, if you want mm -hmm. to, you know, add some softness to your brown, but also you know, have, you need the technical component of like being able to hold stuff as well. So they, they've kind yeah. of, I think, taken advantage of it well. I think it works well for their brand. As you get in here, you can see this is a, a cover, is one piece. And uh, then we have, of course, the, the, the back side. And then there's actually an insert piece, which is a third piece. So there's actually three different pieces that are being molded and put together. So, you know, not the simplest design, but um, overall, like not overly complex either. It's very, it's very kind of like focused on some pretty basic shapes that these guys are really trying to own. So, you know, something like this molded pulp, uh, you do have to pay for the setup, which we'll get to in a second, but outside of the molding, once you're in production, it's actually really cost effective. Cool. So yeah, so we've got three three parts here, um, and I might estimate around 30 cents a piece on these. Of course, there's different grades of this molded pulp that could change the cost pretty dramatically um, um, from you know, all the way, the most basic level of it that we often use to help describe to people who've never seen it before. Is like an egg carton. That's like a very right. basic level molded pulp was very rough and something you wouldn't want in most packaging, but um, that's something people would see in their daily life. This is on the high end of it is like in apple packaging, you might have some trays that are made out of this, but they're so refined, but they're also producing millions of those and are, you know, uh, one of the few that's willing to go to that extra level. Um, yeah. This kind of falls on the higher end of, of grade, but it's it's also not up to that kind of Apple standard either. I think this is much more, uh, you know, realistic in terms of um, really refining and, and getting it right for a brand like Quip. Probably intentional, yeah, because it, it, like you say, it feels like they're trying to do a little bit of that. Yeah, they're natural. not trying to be over technical. They don't want it yeah. to feel like plastic, like when you open up an right. Apple product, even though they tout how recycled it is and how it's sustainable, it feels like plastic sometimes. Like it, they almost go too far in terms of the refinement. This actually yeah. feels really nice. Got it. Any co additional cost for to consider for the hang tag or anything on the top there? Yeah, so the hang tag um, really is, is uh, just folded paper um, that is um, printed with this uh, kind of metallic film that, that really is, is pretty cost effective. I mean, it's just a piece of paper that's folded and die cut essentially. So you know, that might add another couple cents and a couple cents to maybe glue it on in there with these other elements. So maybe another five cents for something like that. Okay, so pretty basic on the parts list. What about as you actually open up the product and you get into... Yeah, I mean, one thing that these guys have, it's a, maybe a little beyond what most packaging has, is they have this, they have this case for the product itself, um, yeah. which we would consider part of the packaging because you know, it really is kind of can all be delivered together and, and, and a part of the packaging. But on the other hand, this is kind of a takeaway product by itself. This is a carry case that the yeah. consumer can, can use going forward. But it's really designed for the most part to really protect and showcase the product correctly because it re does a really good job of just, you know, both like keeping it positioned correctly as well as, um, you know, really um, sanitizing it as well, like, you know, delivering this so it's a nice clean um, product that you're you know, <laughs> willing to put in your mouth after you purchase it. So um, I thought the the effect of that, by the way, is nice because I think when you open the the inner that carton, and yeah. you see that, it almost reminded me of like Jurassic Park when they when they pull out the DNA.
<laughs> I almost said, like maybe. Smell. It has a little bit of that test tube feel yeah. to it for sure, and just the, how it's surrounded in this white feels very clean, uh, almost clinical like. But again, because right. of the softness of this material, it, it feels um, feels very nice as well. It doesn't feel overly clinical. Yeah, it's a good touch. Yeah, something like this is um, really um, pretty simple. Um, two types of plastic and two different methods of making this as well. Uh, the, this clear right here is probably PET. Um, it's a what we would call blown mold, meaning that um, the, the mold itself is uh, um, just the exterior with the plastic blown into it. Whereas this this inner one is really more of a uh, uh, injected molded piece, which has much more detail. And they needed to do that to really make it capable to kind of have all these different shapes and everything to lock this in so it's directionally positioned the correct way so that logo shows front and forward. Um, Got it. Which is pretty That's cool nice. and, and it's nice they thought that last point through, which helps it get into the packaging and look correctly when it's set in here. Um, just really thinking through that, like all the steps to present, present the product, which is nice. What do they got in there, King Kong? That seems pretty expensive. Do you feel like that's what, what no, how would you price that? Actually, you know, the plastic components are, you know, typically pretty cost effective, which is why we see so much plastic in packaging typically is it's pretty cost effective. You know, injected plastic parts are more expensive because the actual uh, mold setups and things like that. But putting that aside, if you're if you are at a uh, a healthy enough volume then that really is amortized and, and is not really much of a concern so yeah the pretty cost effective i would venture to say maybe five cents or so for for just this component oh, and wow. then maybe maybe the same for for this part here so a total of maybe 10 cents for for both parts okay and then the other thing that seems nice with that packaging is they were really thoughtful with they have a lot of stickers they have you know things keeping it keeping it in place yeah. like you know, twist to open, things like that. What's the cost look like for adding that on there? Really, the 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 cost is relatively low. Sometimes these stickers, you can see one right here that wraps around and seals this. There's another one on the on the cover here that um, was applied um, to kind of show this this marketing campaign they're doing. Um, stickers like that are really real cheap they're like maybe a penny two pennies each um okay. you know we've got two or three in here so i would maybe estimate gosh you know anywhere from three to five cents for something like that there might be you know some consideration for the labor of adding these different stickers throughout the process but um i think with some of the wider estimates i've given on labor already i think that could be absorbed in there and then what about final assembly pack out? Do you feel like that would be a separate line item or for the for the whole carton? This would likely be um, packed out by the product factory itself. And so the packaging would really be provided to them and, and, and that's where that cost would come in, not necessarily in the packaging setup cost or anything like that. Um, but, you know, something like that, this is not overly complex, um, really dropping dropping this into the plastic dropping that into the case and then adding this uh, this wrapper around here you know something for to do all of that I couldn't see that adding more than 10 cents total into the, the whole uh, process let's talk about setup fees though because I'm guessing there's a lot of custom tooling and dies things like that right what would you what's your yeah. guess on what's your estimation on setup yeah for sure I mean if we look at this box compared to you know a lot of the competitors in their space, you know, most of the boxes for uh, Oral-B or whatever are are just folded carton, which I have yeah. relatively low setup, if any. Um, if you're at volume, you're really just talking about your, your press plates and die lines and some tooling for, uh, you know, folding the boxes. But, um, you know, for these guys, they kind of did do some a very different approach where they use this molded case. They have the molded plastic inside. Those those molded components are gonna require quite a bit of setup actually to produce. If we, again, look at the componentry of this and, and you know, break it down by that, for the, the, the molded pulp itself, that's, those are relatively cheap in terms of molded items. 
um, I would say to, to, to do the setup on that is probably gonna be as low as five to 10,000. Again, like the quality of the actual pulp itself, um, the, the finish on it, those things could affect that and, and you know, knock it up a bit, but um, I think that's a, a pretty good estimate for starting it. Um, the actual plastic components are gonna be more expensive, um, even though they're lower cost to actually produce, um, you know, once the mold's done, the, the actual mold setup's a little bit more, uh, more intense because you're, you're heating these elements and, and just you have to use different materials in, in your actual molds. Um, so, you know, the, the blow mold for the clear PET, you know, maybe that, uh, that one might be a little bit lower. Maybe that one's five to 10. I would say for the, this plastic component up here, that one's probably, you know, closer to 10 or, or maybe even more to, to kind of do that refined injected plastic part. So, you know, between all of that, you know, we, we probably have somewhere between uh, 20 to 25,000 in mold setups. Got it. And then as far as the printed papers, that would all be the, typically no setup on that. If they're producing this at volume, um, that would really be um, a, a very small fee and, and uh, the factory probably wouldn't charge you for doing the setup of those plates and stuff if you're working with a qualified group. So we're talking a buck 45 for the actual production and then 20 to 30K in setup. But, you know, based on the quantities they're doing, 20 to 30K is that seems very cheap. Also, they're reusing a lot of those across different products, different price points, things like that. Yeah. Like that, I've noticed that, uh, that basic shell and then that plastic cap is pretty much the same. So they've, when you amortize that across their run, it's probably pennies per year. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you can look at it just in terms of, you know, the, the cost and making sure you're covered in terms of your cost of goods. But I think as we'll get into when we kind of break this down a little bit more, um, you know, it's really an investment, not just in, um, you know, getting the product packaged and sent to the consumer, but in their brand. And I think they've yeah. really kind of done things right there. So speaking of that, let's, let's score this because I'm, yeah. you know, again, to me, I'm like, this is pretty much tens across the board. So I'm interested to see, there's a couple of, a couple of dings that they got in my opinion, but I'm interested to see what you think. Let's start with bang for your buck. Where do you feel like that falls? So bang for your buck, I would, th this one's a, uh, probably the hardest one to score just because I don't think it's, you know, an overly expensive packaging by any means. Um, what's the, what's the product cost on this again at retail? That one is, is 49 to 59, but then there's other versions that are, you know, as low as 24 that are pretty yeah, similar yeah. packaging. Yeah. So, so you know, I, I think they're kind of about average in terms of their cost of packaging to the, the cost of of their retail um, but um, that being said within their category they Probably. are much higher cost than almost all of their competition which is again and mostly folded cartons even even like the $80 um, um, you know Oral-B or something like that would probably still be in, in folded carton for the most part yeah. um, but you know what these guys are getting out of it is they, they you know we included in there the cost of the the case that the the product goes in and um, you know they've really kind of achieved a very unique look with this that um, at a pretty cost effective price like this feels very premium yeah um, compared to the competition and it really stands out so in that terms they did quite a lot for that you know. Dollar forty-seven, dollar forty-eight that we were talking about. So, um, I I would rank it relatively high. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't give this, you know, a ten by any means. But I don't know, seven or eight. What are you thinking? Yeah, I think about an eight seems seems right. The reason it scored so high for me was I feel like it drives up the retail price because if you just had the product, I think the product's very cool. But if you had it compared, you know, to a normal toothbrush. I think you'd feel like, oh yeah, maybe maybe this one's five dollars and then this Quip one is ten, but because yeah. of the packaging, I feel like you you appreciate yeah. it more and so you understand why it's a higher price point. So I feel, and again, that goes into some of the other categories, but I feel like they what where they probably splurged on price, they probably made up for in in retail and wholesale. Yeah. So I, I feel like an eight seems pretty accurate to that to me. Yeah, I would agree with that. Let's talk effectiveness. What what I loved um, in the effectiveness of this product. 
you know, and so effectiveness, obviously we're talking about, does it communicate the right, the right messaging? The, here's my theory. Tell me what you think. I think that they perfectly hit a direct to consumer audience and a retail audience. I think if you picked it up on a shelf, you'd understand what it is. And if it showed up in the mail, you would be really sold on the brand. What's your opinion on that? I would agree. They've done a pretty good job um, in terms of like really communicating what needs to be communicated on this because it it, it, it does feel a little, uh, I guess, less retail facing in some sense. Like it doesn't seem like it's like overly feature rich or anything like that, that you would expect on, from a retail packaging, which sometimes aren't the most attractive or, you know, you don't have enough attention to kind of the overall feeling and, and kind of brand. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like it, it really is all here. I mean, you can really go through this between the, between the, the insert cards, the back of the package here. They, they really do kind of give you enough information that I could pick this up if I didn't know what the brand or product was and get a good sense for, you know, what it does. Um, so I think they've done a pretty good job on, on, on being effective and also just overall like relating to the other aspects beyond the words themselves on here that really kind of communicate like you know that this is a very different type of experience and product than i'm used to um yeah. they've done that really well with how they've put this package together so i would say gosh i don't know i, I mean i almost want to put it like at an eight or nine i would go almost a nine the main reason being i feel like i would guess that they get returns based on people not being able to see the product Mm. Um, they do a really nice job with those renderings, but there is just something different, you know, right? And everything else on the shelf, you can see it, you can see what the bristles look like. And I feel like maybe some people might open it and not have it be exactly what they thought. So that would be the one ding for me. So I would think a nine seems pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk defendability. Defendability, you know, how we define that and, and why we use that as a talking point is um, when, when you're designing the package, it's one thing to kind of make sure that the messaging is effective in terms of communicating how it differentiates from the competitors. But I think you also have uh, an opportunity in your packaging to, you know, really kind of create excitement around your brand and create some long-term gain with consumers, meaning uh, they come to recognize your, your, your brand and your product and your packaging um, based off of what you do and, and what you can do to create some defendability in your packaging. So, yeah. which means like, can, can another brand come in and do something very similar to this and essentially, um, you know, steal that audience? I don't think so. I think these guys have done a really good job of really, you know, creating a very unique look for themselves with this packaging that um, they, they kind of own a little bit now. Um, yeah. One example that we do sometimes is, you know, we just quickly cover up the brand. And um, if you look at this or share this with somebody, um, would they, recognize you know what this product is yeah it's a toothbrush category so you know maybe there's not a lot of uh, knowledge of all the different toothbrush brands but these guys have actually done a pretty good job of branding and i think between the product design itself and then this unique packaging this one has a pretty good chance of of you know people recognizing it and you know um what they've invested in just getting this kind of custom tooling and and um, you know, really getting their, their brand out there. I think that they've got some good defendability in this. Yeah. So score, I'm going to throw something crazy out there. I think if we would have talked about this yesterday, it would have been like a 9.5, but <laughs> after going to target last night, I, I think it's a 10. The reason being it was the only thing in the whole department that was security gated. And to me, that's like, people don't even want, I even noticed there was other, uh, kind of imitation products like there was an oral b that was a very similar price point they call it the wave or something like that and yeah the, the, there's a whole stack of those like nobody wanted those these quip ones they're locked up in a separate section i'm like i think they have really carved out something special and especially with how big that category is i mean you're going head to head with johnson and johnson and you know crap you know those types of these really big companies so um i think it's a 10 i don't know is that crazy what do you think i don't know i mean i i I do think like that's probably the best thing they've done is really creating a, something unique for, for their brand and product. So I, I somewhat agree. I just kind of hesitate on giving giving out tens just because it's like that just means there's like no room for improvement. Really, I would say one thing in terms of where they might be able to improve is yeah. um, 
you know, they've got this all white package um, and, and you gotta imagine that this purple brush or, or indigo brush you're seeing here is uh, really something that's gonna change out every packaging. So right. that's the strongest color play and that's gonna be changing out every time. So the primary color you're seeing is this white field and a little bit of this hit of this kind of more medical looking green. It's not a very strong kind of brand presence really when you think about it on the shelf next to everyone else. Um, Got it. Maybe they could have done a better job of kind of just creating, you know, some brand presence through the, the use of coloring and stuff like that. Cause the all white field is just kind of expected and, and been done by everyone. That makes sense. So let's go 9.75, slight room for improvement. But okay. <laughs> uh, execution. What do you think about execution? What, what I loved on execution is I loved how, how experiential the opening process was, right? Like I loved there's pull tabs and you know, it feels like you're kind of walking through it. It felt, it felt very well thought out to me. What's your opinion on execution? Did they nail it? Yeah. Um, I think they've done a really good job, both in terms of the like actual, you know, design and layout component of it and the actual structural design of it. I think everything really is thought through and works well together and then has been kind of gone that final mile of, you know, actual production feel feels very quality. Um, yeah. So I, I really think they've done a, a, a good job there. It, it's, it's really hard to kind of ding them on, on anything. I think part of it is also this material, this molded pulp, even if it, there's some imperfection in it, like a little ding or something, it's kind of a, a material that you, a, a kind of allows for a little bit of imperfection because uh, it, right. it just feels a little bit natural because of how soft it is. Right. Where if that was Apple, you'd, you'd want to return it if it was Maybe, tattoo. yeah, yeah, like it, yeah. But otherwise, I think they've done some good things. Even like the way they wrap this, I kind of kept it away from the edge so it doesn't get dinged up. And then, you know, one of the cool things that I like is that, um, you know, this, this material, if you've ever worked with it before, you know, you can't get as refined as, um, you know, an in, uh, injected plastic where you can kind of really lock things together very tight and, and make sure that everything's secure. This, this is a, a little bit more, uh, again, soft and, and you have more drafting, meaning the angles aren't as sharp. Um, but they've done a really good job of making sure this product really doesn't move in here. While at the same time, yeah. it's not difficult to remove. So I think that's also something that's worth calling out and I would give them points for that for sure. So yeah. I was going pretty high on, on execution. Like a nine or what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's kind of what I was saying it was a nine. Um, I, I think they've done a, a pretty good job for, for the material that it is. It's not the most premium materials, but they've done a really good job with these materials. Nice. Let's talk sustainability. Yeah, sustainability, you know, I don't know enough about this brand and their um, intent, but they've really kind of nailed the sustainability thing too. There's a couple areas that we look at with sustainability. Um, the first one is just overall form factor, meaning uh, is it designed in a way that doesn't, that isn't too large or kind of like sizing the packaging to the product itself. Um, yeah. I think they've done a pretty good job. Obviously the product's very narrow. They could have maybe done a narrow package, but they have a lot to communicate on here. So there's some exceptions to that because um, just within the normal uh, you know, retail landscape, you do need to make sure you have enough of a, a billboard to actually communicate the right information on. So I think they've kept it relatively small for the type of product that it is. So I, I think they would score high for that. I think that the materials themselves are all essentially recyclable or biodegradable. Um, so yeah. that's, that's a plus for them as well. And uh, although they do have plastic in here for the case, this is this is a reusable carry case. Yeah. I mean, reusable is kind of the best type of recyclable, right? So they think that they really thought everything through. They're trying not to, to use wasteful materials at all. Yeah. And for me, where they lose, a, maybe lose a point on the plastic inner there, they make up for in the fact that they're selling refills, right? So um, that's that's pretty clear on their messaging that you can, ref, you know, Oh, that, that's right. They do have refills for these. So you know, the other cool thing about uh, this product is, uh, and this brand is that they're they're relatively new. 
um, and they've kind of come into this um, very early yeah. on. This wasn't their first package, but they, um, you know, quickly saw that an opportunity to really differentiate themselves and as opposed to just like being, you know, very loud and, and, and you know, overly premium looking, they went this direction of like, um, you know, really hinging on these very eco-friendly materials, but doing it in a very cool and innovative way. Um, and I would give them points for that, like, you know, using these materials that are kind of helpful to the environment, but also like using it in a way that really differentiates them. Score for sustainability. Uh, I would say that's pretty high as well. Like, um, it, it, again, it's it's hard to ding them on, on a lot for it. Um, I think maybe the only thing is there's not a lot of information on like, there is a small please recycle package on the back, but um, you know, there's not a lot of communicating into, you know, just, I think that's a part of it as well. Like, are they doing a good job to just promote the overall ideas of wasting less and things like that. Um, yeah. Even like the plastic case, which is pretty simple. Uh, I, I get it, it's a travel case. Um, you know, maybe some consumers, they would just toss that because it's not really communicated. So, you know, maybe I would give them a nine on something like sustainability. So that gives them a total score of 90.375, which is pretty dang high. Wow, that is pretty yeah. high. Let's think of three different takeaways that a brand could take from Quip? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, a couple things like I think that, you know, really thinking through the a unique form factor can go a long ways. I think these guys are showing that, you know, they've really taken the rectangle and kind of redefined it a little bit within their category for their product. So like just really kind of just going back to the core design components of like structurally what's the form factor, um, they really kind of leveraged that to their advantage. Yeah, one that popped uh, up for me is the frustration free packaging. I know you mentioned there's some guidance from Amazon, but I loved the extra thought they put into the pull tabs, into the stickers. It just felt so intentional and it, it made me feel like they had invested more in me as a consumer. And so I felt more attached to the brand immediately just by going through that. Similar to the, the Apple unboxing, you know how beautiful all that is. Uh, yeah. That was that was big for me. So form yeah. factor, uh, frustration free. Let's give, let's give them one more takeaway. They, they I think use. one more that, that comes to mind is, um, you know, I, I think so often you see, uh, uh, you know, brands that really are doing something very similar to what everyone else is doing within their space. Um, these guys have really kind of taken an opportunity to do something different. Um, yeah. That, I, you know, just kind of shows the power of like, if you if you do it different and you do it right, of course, you know, they, they, they've really thought this through and iterated to get it right. But um, um, you can really stand out from the pack and, um, you know, use it to really kind of build, um, build, on top of and and kind of create a really great brand experience with the consumer love that i mean i i i'm certainly think that this is a very memorable thing um that um you know i i'm excited about the brand just just from like going through this totally yeah yeah they did a good job well all right that's quip anything else to add on there should we wrap it up yeah i i think uh you know I'm excited to get off this and, uh, you know, go brush my teeth again today. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if the product holds up as much as the uh, packaging, but, um, yeah. And guys, if you haven't seen the full unboxing of Quip on the packaging list, click this video here. You can watch that now and then make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And you can see all the other videos we have coming. And last thing is if you need help with your packaging, hit the link in the comments to book a call with us and we'd love to chat with you. Uh, that's it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging, Brian. Thanks.